Hello my beautiful friends, it's Amanda here and today we're talking about a new palette from Lorac Cosmetics. This is the Fairy Tale Forest palette. This palette is currently available. I purchased mine from Ulta, but the whole Fairy Tale Forest collection did just become available on the Lorac website as well. This is the only thing from the collection that I was interested in, so this is the only piece that I purchased and this palette is priced at 35 US dollars. The Fairy Tale Forest palette is the exact same shape and size as these little 18 pan pro palettes that came out last year, the Noir and Soleil palettes. I did a whole swatch and review with those when they released if you're interested in hearing more about these. So if you've seen these other palettes, the components are pretty much identical here. Obviously the big difference is the Fairy Tale Forest printed in green, the name of the palette. Same amount of product and everything. This palette also contains 16 grams of product, same layout inside. We have the soft touch matte black packaging, magnetic closure. There is a very nice usable size mirror inside. And like the Soleil and Noir palettes, there aren't shade names in here because these little pans are magnetic. So you can pop them out and rearrange them or swap the shades. If you have other palettes with the same pan size, you can rearrange them. So that's why the shade names are not printed inside. There is this little sort of protective sheet that has the shade names. So I still will be able to provide shade names for the swatches and the tutorial and all that. As a reviewer, I don't love this. I understand the reasoning for this makes perfect sense because the shades can be swapped around. However, as a reviewer, I don't like that. I don't rearrange my palettes very often and I reference the shade names a lot. So I realize that it's not a problem everybody has. It is just a personal thing. I like having the shade names in the palette, but I understand why. It's just still annoying that I have to keep track of this piece of paper for the sake of my content, which I realized now that I say it out loud is not actually any sort of problem. But anyway, inside the palette there are eight mattes and then 10 shimmers. And within the 10 shimmers, there are quite a few different textures. Some are a more sheer glittery topper type of texture. Some are just straight up shimmery metallic shades. And then there are a couple very foily shades in there as well. So a nice variety of textures. None of the shadow types that I personally dislike being pressed glitters and matte with glitters. As usual, very pleased with Lorac's formula choices here. I've seen a lot of people saying that this is a new formula. I'm not quite sure where that info is coming from. I'm sure it's just out there somewhere officially that I've missed, but I went and looked around on Lorac's social medias where they were talking about this palette, and I haven't seen anything other than new shades, so I haven't seen them specifically referencing a new formula. Because I had heard so many people saying that this was a new formula, I just swatched a couple shades side by side with my Noir palette, which is one I've surprisingly reached for a lot. Side note, I did my husband's Halloween makeup, so he was Dracula and I used this palette and some like stage blood. Anyway, so this palette has moved to the top of my vanity. I did just a little anecdotal comparison and I feel like these are the same formulas. So maybe the reference to the new formula is when these were reformulated last year. I could be completely off base, but if you're wondering, I think these are the same formula-wise. If you've tried the Noir and Soleil palettes, that's exactly what the Fairy Tale Forest shadows feel like to me, which is amazing. I love the Lorac Pro formula. Quality-wise, they have never let me down. I've enjoyed almost every single Lorac Pro eyeshadow that I've ever tried. I was a little nervous when I heard talk of reformulation, but this seems to be on par with all of the fabulous experiences I've had with the Lorac Pro formula over the years. Let's take a look at some swatches of this palette. 
Because there are so many shades, I broke it up into two sets of swatches. The first round of swatches are these nine pans. Then the second round of swatches are these nine pans. I see a very distinct color story here. So that's just why I swatched it that way. I think this is a really useful way to look at this palette and it just makes sense in my brain. So that's why I broke it up the way that I did. You will see both finger and brush swatches. As always, the finger swatches are on top and the brush swatches are directly below. So let's take a look at those swatches now. What if I told you I couldn't stay? Take me or leave me. You can still walk away. What if I told you? This love won't be easy Will you still be here? Is this real? Will you still be here? If I say how I feel I don't wanna wake up one day and see you gone Will you still be here? Will you still be here? I did see a couple of requests for comparisons with this palette when I posted my little swatch picture on Instagram. Almost everybody who wanted a comparison wanted to see this Fairy Tale Forest palette swatched with a Natasha Denona palette that I don't have, so I am so sorry. I am not able to do that comparison for you. However, I will show you a tutorial using this palette. That way you can see these shades in action and just get more of an idea about how they perform. You know, my first instinct was to do a green look, but I feel like everybody who does a tutorial with this palette is gonna use those green shades. Plus, I just did an emerald green look in my five product face video with the Persona Identity 2 palette, and you could definitely use that tutorial with this palette and do th that exact same eye look using this palette. So I felt like, you know, I need to switch it up a little bit. I definitely was drawn to this gorgeous, sparkly, shimmery, shifty pink shade. So I decided to switch it up from the green. I'm sure there are a lot of wonderful tutorials out there using those green shades, but I'm gonna show you how I got this look that I'm wearing in today's video now. I already kind of covered my feelings as far as the formula, the performance, definitely on point. I've loved Lorac shadows for years and years and years. I think that they are under hyped as far as their formula goes. And 
I have a lot of thoughts about why that is that we don't necessarily need to go into right now. The point is the shadows perform beautifully, mattes, shimmers, all these different textures, they work really well, they're user friendly, they're not so crazy hard to work with that they're going to be difficult for anybody to use. Whether you're a beginner, whether you are a seasoned makeup artist, I think you're going to enjoy these formulas, textures. I don't have a single complaint about performance of this palette. I'm of two minds about the color story. You know, I'm happy to see them doing a little bit more color. This little jewel tone green and purple pink shimmery shifty little moment here in the color story is really pretty. I am so happy to see Lorac branching out. They are known for being very neutral. And look, let's be real. 14 out of the 18 shades are very, very neutral. If you have another Lorac palette in your collection, whatever palette that is, then you very likely already have these shades or close enough from Lorac. So I am happy to see this but I just wish it was more. I wish they had pushed that color idea more. You know, I get it. They do a lot of neutrals. That's kind of their thing. I feel like maybe they got a little gun shy on doing more complex color stories because several years ago they came out with these sunset palettes and they were so cool. They were colorful. I feel like maybe they were just ahead of their time. They didn't get this massive reception and since then we've seen neutral after neutral from Lorac. I understand where it's coming from. I do just wish that this palette had taken it a little bit further. When you look at these nine pans, this is a cool palette. It's balanced, it's got color, it's got neutrals, it's different. Very, very different, especially for Lorac. And then we just have this very neutral, very beige half of the palette. And once you, once you see it, you can't unsee it. It's like two different palettes. I'm gonna show you a little mock-up. I toyed around with some different shades and I tried to up the ante on this color story a little bit. Just in my dreams, this is what this fairy tale forest would, could, should look like. I don't want to completely get rid of the neutrals. I understand that the Lorac customer likes the neutrals. I like the neutrals. I'm the Lorac customer, clearly. I just wish that there was a little bit more green, a little bit more depth, a little bit more color coming from this palette. When you say fairy tale forest, I don't think mostly neutral. I think partly neutral, but not mostly neutral. So I just wish there was a little bit more. Lorac, let me know. Hit me up if you want to collaborate on a palette because I love you and I want you to succeed. <laughs> this is so close to being absolutely fantastic for me. It's still really good. It's, it's really good. It's just close. It's not quite there for absolutely fantastic, but you know what? I'm not giving up. I am still here for my Lorac palettes. I am still rooting for Lorac. I am still looking for them. I am still purchasing from them. And you know, I think a lot of people are going to love this. I think this is going to work well for a lot of people. And I would love to know what you think about this palette. Is this something you're interested in? Have you purchased it? Are you glad it's mostly neutral? Are you with me? You wish there was some more color? I always love to hear what you think about things too, so make sure you leave all your thoughts down in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Was that weird? Should I? I'm gonna do it again. Great starting. Classic, just not doing research before you start the video. It's great, it's fine. It's fine. Palettes, the noir. No no <laughs> okay. Okay, it's fine. You're nailing it. This little cheek combo is very cute. Okay, getting distracted by my own shimmery cheeks as usual. I, dang it. Okay, I'm fine. It's fairy tale, tip, pale, fairy tale, fairy tale forest. Nailed it. Put me on your eyeballs. Wow. Wow. <laughs>
What a weirdo. It's not news to anyone. Okay. What? Where? What did it? Okay. Where to start? Where do I start? I mean, it's a cute, it's a cute little pinky mauve kind of cool toned. I definitely feel like I could live in a fairy tale forest with this eyeshadow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's cute. It's easy. That's really just all I'm looking for. <laughs> you know what? Scratch that. Just forget I said it. Okay, I'm gonna go make some more videos for you because I love your faces. Each and every one of them. Okay? And thanks for hanging out. Oh, go check out my Etsy store. I put up all my holiday stuff and all kinds of really cool, like, special high-end gemstone stuff and some really cute Hanukkah stuff and some really cute winter stuff. So if you're here for winter solstice, Hanukkah, Christmas, just the candy, whatever it is, check out my Etsy store because I make things. And if you like things, you should look at the things I make. Okay, I'm gonna go. This has gotten away from me, but I love your face so much. You are a special little treasure and I'll see you soon. Okay, bye.